of pastoring here at Life Church, both in Walla Walla and Pendleton. And this ought to be the greatest celebration that you have ever been to, the greatest party you've ever attended, because today we celebrate the greatest day in history, and that is the day that our Lord Jesus rose from the grave. It's, oh yeah, you can give God praise. This morning, we're going to sing two more songs that focus on the greatness of our God and the greatness of this day. And then I'm gonna share a message with you that I trust you will leave here different than the way you came in. So today, as we go back into worship in just a moment, will we get, can you, can I challenge you and encourage you, let's give God praise fit for a risen King, amen? Amen, if it's your first time or your hundredth time, our hope and our heart this morning is that you are strengthened and encouraged by the love of Jesus. 
And during our next worship song, we have something really exciting. We are celebrating water baptisms this weekend. There's over 33 people getting water baptized, including Walla Walla in our Pendleton campus. And so um, this morning we have some friends that are gonna come up here and share their story. And water baptism is symbol symbolic. It's symbolic of what happens and transpires on the inside of us. When we give our life to Jesus, the Bible says this, the old is gone and behold, he makes all things new. And so as they go into the water, it's a symbolic that God is washing away that old life and they are resurrected into a new life. So let's hear a little bit of their stories. Hi, my name is Christy. I've been attending Life Church for over two years now. I was an addict from the age of 11. I got married young and went through decades of trying to live life my own way. This kept me out of church until I found Life Church in January of 2022. On January 16th, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Shortly after that, I became very sick. According to the doctors, I was dying, but God had a different plan for my life. Easter Sunday, two years ago to the day, I came up for prayer after the service and was healed. God is the God of healing. Come on. Today, I renounce my old way of living life on my own and pronounce my new life in Christ by going public with my faith and taking this step with Jesus to be water baptized. Hi, good morning. My name is Raylene. I have been attending live church for almost a year now. I grew up knowing about Jesus and occasionally attended church, but nothing really stuck with me until my brother and sister-in-law invited me to Life Church. I truly surrendered to Jesus in 2023. Before I gave my life to Jesus, I had this empty feeling in my heart that I thought only worldly things could fix when really I needed Jesus. He had changed my life for the better with his everlasting love, healing, and peace. I am thankful Je Jesus made me new. Come on. <laughs> Today I'm going public with my faith and taking this next step with Jesus to be water baptized. Woo! All right, well, if that doesn't get us excited to worship, I don't know what is. But it's a lot with those, there's some other people that are getting water baptized. So we're going to go back into worship, but you'll be able to watch on the screen up here. You'll be able to see them baptized. And just, we're going to celebrate and cheer just like heaven does when people come to him. Right, let's worship. We worship you, Jesus.
conflict growing. It's growing and at times I feel like I'm shrinking, not believing that something could change me or love me. Why? I'm guilty. And with unclean lips and unclean hands, we cry for justice in the streets, not knowing the weight of what justice truly carries. Justice demands perfection and against that standard, we are guilty. I'm too broken, too far gone. I'm too damaged. I'm unworthy. After all, if anyone knows God, you know that I'm guilty. But despite my attitude, my perspective, you did it. The price was high and you paid it. All of that for humanity who is guilty. And even still, by grace and through faith, you make us worthy. The death that you experienced is the one that I deserve. Sinless perfection was sentenced guilty. But then came the morning. While others were sleeping or grieving, you were breaking out and breaking through. The enemy thought that he had won, but then came the morning. You made a way for humanity, reclaimed what was stolen, promised grace and forgiveness to those who call on you. And you took your place seated above every name. And it was all because of what you did that morning. Jesus, you rolled stones and tore veils. The earth quaked because it knew the king of all the earth was raised to life again. And if you were raised to new life, then I know I will too. So this morning, we worship God, the Lion of Judah, triumphant over sin, death, and the grave. He rose and reigns today. Jesus, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. So lift your voice, because then, then came the Lord.
couldn't help but think this morning, I don't know about you, but on that morning, on that morning that changed forever, all of humanity and eternity, that that morning the birds were louder than they'd ever been. I can't help but think that before any human ever woke up, that the birds were chirping louder and somebody said, is there something different about this morning? And then as it began to resound throughout the city, that he's not there anymore, but it's empty, so that your life doesn't have to be empty, so that it can be full of purpose. Come on, somebody. It's a good day. My goodness. Can you do this? Can you greet two or three people, four people around you? Can you tell them he is risen? Then it's good that we get a worship together in the house today. To the uh, to the other egg. Your egg's just special. <laughs> Why did the Easter egg hide? He was a little chicken. Knock <laughs> knock. <laughs> Who's there? Jesus. Jesus who? Tell your peach Jesus has risen. What happens if you tell an egg a joke? They crack up. <laughs> <laughs> How does the Easter Bunny stay active? I don't know. Exercise. <laughs> Hi, babies! Exercise! Man, weren't those kids hilarious? We have the cutest kids at Life Church. <laughs> Well, hey, good morning. We are so glad that you guys decided to join us for Easter weekend. We exist to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. We want you to thrive and grow. So help us help you. Fill out a Connect card by tapping your cell phone to the black plate attached to the seat in front of you or text Connect LC to 97000. We cannot wait to get to know you and help you on your spiritual journey. On the first Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m., our church gathers together to worship and pray. If you have a prayer request, fill out that same Connect card by tapping your cell phone to the black plate attached to the seat in front of you or text Connect LC to 97000. We'll pray for these requests and when we meet here this Tuesday at 6 p.m. for Pursuit Night. That's all we have. Thanks for coming to Life Church. We'll see you guys next week. Well, happy Resurrection Day, Life Church. Come on, let's give God praise this morning. I want to welcome all of you who are here today. Maybe you're joining us for the first time. And I know that you might come feeling like a guest. We trust that you're going to leave feeling like family. And I'd like to take just a moment and welcome all of our online community. And also, we are one church in multiple locations. And so right now, people are meeting in a high school auditorium in Pendleton, Oregon. So I want to say hello to you. Come on, Walla Walla, will you say hello to your Pendleton family? We love you so very, very much. So grateful to be one church and, and, and giving God praise together on this Easter Sunday morning. And, and, and we would love to be able to have the opportunity to take you on a spiritual journey, to be your, your guides for your spiritual journey, so to speak. And what we'd like to do is let you know a little bit about what that is before I open the message today. And what we, like to, what, what we believe God's call in our life is as a church is to really help you find the life that you were made for. You were made for a life by God. And we define that, what we think from the Bible from cover to cover in four different ways. And that is this, is that you would know God, that you would find freedom, that you would discover purpose and make a difference. And what we mean by each of these for the spiritual journey, we would have the privilege of taking you on, would be that you would know God, not religion. Not just have your name on a membership role in a church or denomination, but that you would actually know God. And then find freedom. What we mean by that is so you could settle your yesterdays so you can see clearly tomorrow. We all have had issues in our past and God wants to free us from those issues. So find freedom and then discover purpose because God made sure he made you on purpose. None of us are an accident. So we want to help you discover purpose and then ultimately make a difference because all of us know down deep 
We weren't just made to make a dollar. We were made to make a difference. And so we have something around here called the Dream Team. And they were helping you get parked outside, leading you to a wall of donuts. Come on, donut eaters today. We had a wall of donuts for you, coffee, and they're helping out in your kids right now in our kids' church area. And all kinds of ways that the Dream Dream Team serves here, knowing that together we can make a difference by building what God is building called the local church. And we'd love to be able to take you on that journey because Ultimately, when it comes down to the end of our life, we want to be laying our head down on that pillow for the last time, or maybe knowing we're about ready to get into that casket, knowing that we live life making a difference. Speaking of a casket, it reminds me of these three country boys as I get started today. They went to their best friend's funeral, and and these country boys, one of them just piped up and looking at their friend in the box and just said to his other friends, he said, hey, uh, man, what what do you want people to say about you? When you're lying in your box. And he said, well, that's easy. I, I want him to say he was, he was a family man. He, he loved his wife well and loved his kids well. And man, his kids and family loved him back. And they stood there for another moment. And then the other friend piped up and said, well, I, I know what I want him to say about me when they're looking down the, at me in the box. And said, I just want him to say, man, he was so civic minded and he, he loved the community and he, he just was so generous and cared about other people and he made such a difference. They both looked back at their country friend and who started the question, which is a great question, by the way, to ask ourselves, says, well, what, what do you want them to say about you when they look at you in the box? He goes, well, that's easy. I want her to look down and go, he's moving. <laughs> that's funny, no matter what you think. <laughs> hey, it's resurrection day. Jesus is still moving. So we'd be honored to take you on that journey where you could know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. None of us are meant to walk the journey alone. So we'd, lo- we'd be honored to walk that journey together with you. As I start the message today, I would love to ask you a very simple question that I know you already know the answer to, but I, I have a reason to ask it. What year is it? 2024. All right. And then all of us at the same time, what is your birth year? Yeah, see, some of you didn't want to say. You're like, mm. Before your time, preacher. <laughs> why, have you ever pondered, why is it that year? Why is it 1949 or 1982? or Why is it 2024? It's very simply this. It's because of the birth of Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus literally separated time, separated BC from AD. And so it is 2,024 years since Jesus was born. Jesus lived, Jesus was born, he lived, he died, he was crucified, he was buried, and he raised on the third day. We celebrate the greatest event in all of history, the person who literally separates time from old to new, BC to AD. Come on, give God praise one more time on this great day. This is how big of a deal it is of why we come together on Easter Sunday morning and we celebrate the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Well, today, I have the privilege of unpacking a few verses. I don't have a ton of verses for you today, but I do have one that I want you to walk away with remembering. And it's out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it's the Apostle Paul writing to a church in Corinth. And he says this, let me now remind you Now, for some of you, this might be a reminder of what the gospel is. But for some of you, this might be the first time that you're ever truly hearing the gospel. So for all of us, I trust that it's going to take us to a new level of appreciation for Easter Sunday morning and the God of which we worship. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news. That, by the way, is what the word gospel means. The word gospel is good news. Let me remind you of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news. I want to repeat what I just said. It is this good news. I'm going to read that, and I want you to say the, these two words that are highlighted when I get there. It is this what? It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. Welcome to culture. I passed on to you what was most important. You know what's really 
it's really, it really matters that we figure out what's most important. It's, it really matters that we figure out even what's most important as it pertains to the gospel. That we figure out what is the most important and how do you define the gospel? What is the good news? If you ever want to find a verse that tells us succinctly what the good news is, it is in 1 Corinthians 15. It says, here's what's most important and what had been passed on to me. So I pass on to you what was most important, what had been passed on to me, which by the way, truth is not new in our generation or new in any generation. Truth gets passed on to us through the scriptures from generation to generation. We don't come up with our own truth. So he passed on what had been passed on to him. And here it is. Here's what's most important. Christ died for our sins. That is the most important thing for us to understand. He gives us three thoughts, and I'm gonna focus on these today. Just as the scriptures said, he was buried, that's the second thought, we'll deal with that, and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. So I wanna deal with today, these three days, with these three theological truths, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, he was raised from the dead. And then Paul records for us, after this verse, all these people that Jesus appeared to. He appeared to this person, he appeared to them, and he appeared to them, which I just think would be super cool to be on that list of which Jesus appeared to. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was Jesus and I was appearing to people, I would have picked a few other people to show up to as well. <laughs> Jesus, of course, he's going to appear to his disciples, let them know, hey, don't, you know, be of good cheer. It's all great. Everything's good. I'm alive. And that's, that's important. I would do that too. But just because of the revengeful part of me, I would just show up to some of the naysayers. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you know, there was the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the religious people and the Sadducees. You know, I, I would have showed up to some. I would have showed up like to my younger brothers who didn't believe me at this time. And I just said, ha, ha, I'm back. You know, I'd have been like, it's me, right? I would have showed up to the Sadducees who didn't believe in a resurrection. I would have showed up to them and just turned, you know, t- t- made them turn around and go, boo. <laughs> I would, I, that would have just been me. Now you're getting a little peek into the darkness of my own soul. <laughs> and he... He, but he appears to all these people. And then he appears to Paul. He writes this. And this is, Paul says this about himself. He goes, I'm the least of all the apostles. I don't deserve to be named among the apostles because I persecuted the church. But then he writes this next verse. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. And here is my prayer for you today. This is my hope for you. That as you hear about the gospel today, and as you hear about the grace of God today, that it would not be without effect. That it would have an effect on your life like it did the Apostle Paul. That it would have an effect on your life as it did on the disciples. And that Pendleton, Oregon would be changed. That Walla Walla would be changed. And everybody online would be changed. And we would have, we would let the grace of God have the effect on us of that which it is worthy. Can I hear an amen to that today? So I want to talk on this subject. I want to talk on the subject all or nothing. And here's why. Because Easter is all about a God who gave his all so that we could lack nothing. Now, all or nothing, companies figured this out. Not, I, I, I'm sure you, you figured this out about companies. That they like to package their stuff so you have to buy more than one thing. You know, like you've, you've needed a, one battery at some, and so you go to the store. I just need one battery. You can't find one battery. They don't want to just sell you one battery. That'd be too easy and too, too, too cheap. So we package it in multiples so that you have to buy all or nothing. How about this? When you need a Band-Aid, I've never seen one Band-Aid for sale. You got to get 25, right? You have to get a box of Band-Aids. Now, you, you Costco shoppers, you're used to it. You don't care. You buy a gallon of mayonnaise when you go Costco shopping, right? You're like, <laughs> get it. And now some of us, some of us are all or nothing people. We have all or nothing people in the room right now. And, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you're married to an all or nothing person because my wife raised her last night that I'm in one of those all in kind of people. So here's what I mean by the all or nothing people. You, you work out every day. You say, I'm, at the beginning of the year, you're like, you're all in. And you work out at least five days a week and you start watching what you eat and you're doing it for week, day in and week in and week out and month, and, you know, three months, five months, you're into it. You're like all in until one day someone walks by you with a Twinkie <laughs> and you go, I deserve a box of Twinkies today. 
and you just, it's nothing anymore. It's just like it's all or nothing, which has been a little bit of my journey. Uh, about five months ago, I, I went to the doctor and did all the blood work and all that, and, and he says, Bob, your, your cholesterol is in the high. Well, I'm like, well, it was last time too, and uh, we still get along, doc. It's like, nah, it's, it's getting, getting a little too high. You need, to do, you, need to do, you need to make some changes. So I just added 50% to my workout routine. I added days to it. So I, and I've been disciplined. I've been going for it for five months. And, and I'm like, I, I'm disciplined. I'm working. Even when I travel, I'm hitting the gym. I'm, I'm going for it. I'm watching what I eat, which I always did, by the way. I always watched what I ate. And, and, and I've started falling in love with salmon, eating good food like that, which how many salmon lovers are there in the room? I mean, salmon, I just, wow, I didn't realize salmon could be so good, especially with butter on it. And <laughs> so I... I hadn't had butter for months. I haven't had, come on, you're going to feel bad for me here. I haven't had bacon for months. I'm like, I haven't had bacon, I haven't had butter, watching all this. And until yesterday, it's my wife's fault. It's not my fault at all. We went grocery shopping together, she, together and she bought, she bought two packages of bacon. Bacon. And, you know, one with like all the, you know, pepper on it and all that. And then we wake up yesterday, and she's like, hey, you want to cook some bacon? And I'm like, it's all or nothing. This is it. It's all or nothing. And I saw my black stone griddle out on the back porch. I'm like, oh, man, I haven't warmed that thing up. And I just, that was it. That was it. And I, I like, put on clothes that could get splattered with grease, and I dived in. And I just, I cooked all the bacon. I didn't cook two or three pieces of bacon. I cooked all the bacon and then the bacon grease. I went ahead and just made some pancake batter, which by the way has butter in it. And then I made pancakes in the bacon grease, threw butter on top of the pancakes, threw syrup on that and just started having some breakfast. I just, it was all or nothing. Kind of an all or nothing person. Some of you are that way. Let me tell you something about Jesus. He's all or nothing people. Jesus and his disciples, they were all in. And Jesus' Easter weekend is all about a God who went all. He said, I'm going to give it all. I'm going to give it all so you will lack nothing. I'm going to do everything I can so that you could have everything I have. 2,000 years ago, years ago, Christ gave it all. How many of you are grateful this Easter Sunday morning that Jesus gave it all? I'm grateful. So I want to unpack this scripture for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, I passed on to you what was most important, what had been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins. Now, what does that mean that he died for our sins? First off, it's Friday. It's Friday. And, 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 and so I want, I want to unpack all three thoughts from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all three, all three theological thoughts about what's most important. They pertain to a particular day of this weekend. And Friday is that he died for our sins. So why did he do that? Jesus gave it all, and I want to say why. I want to talk about God for a few moments. Now, this first theological thought is a little difficult for us to wrap our minds around completely. And I know every theological thought is beyond our full understanding. But for us to appreciate Easter Sunday morning on Sunday, you have to go back two days. To appreciate Sunday, you have to have an awareness of Friday. You have to start on Friday to be able to walk through Saturday so that you can get to Sunday. And what Friday represents of why Jesus gave it all, and let me start here, is because this, because God is just. God is just. Now, what does that mean? What do you mean that God is just? Here's what I mean. I mean that, that all of us have sinned. Now, you've all heard that, I'm sure, and you expect that when you come to church. That's why I don't go to church, because preachers are always telling me that I'm a sinner. Hey, I'm telling you that I'm a sinner, that we're all in this together. God is just, but here's what the Bible says. Everyone has sinned, and we all, so that's everybody here, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Now, here's what I want you to grasp with me. We like to think in terms of you, that we compare ourselves with each other. And we say, you know what? Well, I'm not as bad as that person on the news. or I'm not as bad as them. And I'm not as bad as that person on social media. And I've been a fairly good person. And that's probably true. I meet so many amazing, great people. The problem is God's, God, if he is grading on a scale, that it's not a scale with all of us you know, taking the test at the same time amongst ourselves because it's not just a standard. It's a glorious standard and it's not just a glorious standard. It's God's glorious standard. So here's the deal. Jesus has taken the class with us. He took the test first. 
he got an A, and we all flunked, okay? So that's pretty much what it is, is that we all have sinned and fallen short. We didn't pass the test, and so God is just. Here's what I want you to understand about God. When you think about why did Jesus do Friday, you think, well, because he loved us. That is absolutely true. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That is true. But it wasn't just that God loves us, and that's what, why Friday exists, because God, why didn't God just from heaven wave a wand and say, it's over, you're all forgiven? Well, that could have been the love of God. He could have just done that, but he didn't. And the reason why is because of this. This is why. It's because God is just. He, he, he requires justice. Now, um, let me explain it like this. Let's say that you and I are friends, and hopefully we are. And let's say that I come up to you and say, I just uh, got back from your doctor and he wanted me to pass this on to you. And uh, well, actually, I can't even get to that yet. Let me start here. Hey, uh, I just found out that uh, they have discovered a cure to a particular disease. And you would be thinking, well, that's cool. I wonder if I know anybody with it. And you'd be, you'd be, that'd probably be your first thought. But then I say, oh yeah, but I just got back from your doctor and found out you actually have this particular disease. And here's the blood work and here's the scans. Now you'd be like, oh, well, what kind of a disease is it? Well, it's a pretty bad one. Um, no one has survived it. No one's ever survived it. And uh, it's imminent death probably within days. Now I got your attention. You're not just thinking if anybody else has it or how bad is it. You're going, well, I got it. Here's the point of sin. We've all sinned and fallen short. It means this, we all have the disease. We all have it, and it's for sure imminent death because the scripture says the wages of sin is death. So they're, they're well, I guess, thanks for coming to church on Easter. <laughs> Let's close in prayer. That's not the end of the story. Not the end of the story. So the story goes on like this. Let's say that now you're thinking, okay, well, uh, I have that disease, and it's you know, certain death, but you said that they found a cure. They did. No one can afford it. <laughs> Come on, quit messing with me, right? You'd be like, I'm ecstatic, I'm depressed, I'm ecstatic, I'm depressed. No one can afford it, but I got great news for you. That's why it's called, it's called good news. God paid it for you. God paid it for you. So there was a penalty that had to be paid, and God paid it for you. So here's what the Bible teaches about God, who God is. It says that he's just. He's a rock. His works are perfect. All his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and what is it? Just is he. And we all have different personalities, right? But let's boil it down to two different types of personalities in the room right now. We got justice-oriented people, and you're the ones who are like, you're always saying things like this or thinking things like this. Good, they got what they deserved, right? You're, you're justice-oriented people. And then you have mercy-oriented people, and you're thinking, oh, you feel bad for all of them, right? You're like, oh, that's, that's, that's too bad. That's, man, and, and I, I, I want to tell you something about God. He's both a God of justice and mercy at the same time. No, we can't be that way because we'd be schizophrenic. But G Jesus is. God is. He's full. He's fully just and he's fully merciful. And, uh, and let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say it like this. If you grew up with other siblings, how many of you have other siblings, right? You grew up with other siblings. Okay, most of us in the room grew up with some other siblings, which means you relate to this story. Somebody else got in trouble for something somebody else did in your house growing up. So you told on a little brother or little sister or something like that, and you told mom and dad, they did it. They did it. You're like, they're the ones who took the cookies out of the cookie jar, even though you've got melted chocolate chips on your lips and your fingers. But you're like, they did it. They gave it to me. And you blame it on somebody else, and somebody else got in trouble for it. We all have those stories. We could think about them right now and say, oh, yeah, I remember when I got in trouble for that, or they, I got them in trouble. And when, if you are one of those who got your little brother or little sister or older brother or older sister in trouble for something you did, be honest, you didn't come clean until you moved out of the house. Y'all know it's true. You're like, yeah, I actually did that. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Once it's past the statute of limitations, it's like, this is great. Well, I came here to tell somebody, that, listen, your older brother, Jesus, took the fall for you. So justice, there had to be a penalty. Someone, someone had to pay the price, and Jesus paid the price. Why did Jesus give it all? Because God is just. He could have chosen, now ah, that's it. Humanity messed up. Not going to have anything to do with them. We could try, start all over. No. 
He said, I love them too much. I'm going to give of myself. I'm going to pay the price myself, which you know messed with the devil. He never saw that coming. And God conquered hell and the grave that this weekend. Okay. And of course, this is the rest of that Romans where it said everyone's sin and fallen short. It says this, God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus. See, he made us right through Jesus, not through waving a wand, but through Christ died for our sins when he freed us from the penalty. See, there was a penalty for our sin. And here's what I want us to grasp today. Because we grade ourselves on a scale amongst others, we consider ourselves, most of us, they've done studies, most of us think we're better than most. That's just, that's what humanity thinks. We think we're better than most. So we think in terms of getting to heaven on a, uh, on, a, on a scale and we go, well, God, I'm better than most. And so we should make our way in. Here's what I want you to know about Friday and I'll move on to Saturday and Sunday. Here's what I know you, want you to think about Friday. As horrific and as ugly and as an excruciating, the crucifixion and the scourging of Jesus was, it would be just that way if you were the only person's sins that Jesus died for. If I was the only person, it would look just that bad. That's how far separated we are from the holiness of God. And it's when I begin to appreciate the justice of God and the price that he paid, I can celebrate on Sunday. I can't fully with depth appreciate Easter Sunday morning until I understand and appreciate the justice of God on Friday. So Jesus gave it all because God is just. And then I want you to see this. Most important, Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said, and he was buried. So this leads us in to Saturday. Why? What does this speak to for me on Saturday? That God, he gave it all because God is merciful. What is mercy? God not giving us what we deserve. I'm going to be merciful. I'm not going to give you what you deserve because what did Jesus do on Saturday? By the way, he just didn't have a picnic. Wasn't just sleeping. If, uh, for what, if that's what you might think he was doing between Friday and Sunday, just taking a little nap. He was kicking a little devil booty and he was taking some keys from hell in the grave and he was conquering hell and lo- loosing captivity captive and making them free. That's what he was doing. And what happened is, is, is according to Ephesians 4 and 1 Peter 2, according to my understanding, is Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth into hell and he, he, he then conquered hell in the grave. He went there so you and I didn't have to. It's not giving us what we deserve. Mercy is him not giving us. That's Saturday. He was buried. Why is this important theological truth? Because buried speaks to us of this and and buried for three days is that Jesus is the only person who has been scourged and crucified, died, buried for three days and resurrected on the third day. No one else has ever been resurrected like that. Other people have been resuscitated People have had experiences of near-death experience and their hearts stop and talk about leaving their body, but no one has been buried for three days and resurrected after being crucified and carrying the sins of all humanity. Only God has done this because the Bible wants you to know that Jesus wasn't, according to Princess Bride, mostly dead. He wasn't just resuscitated. He was resurrected. Come on, church. So why did he do that? Why did Jesus give it all? Because God is just. That's Friday. And because God is merciful. So what what is mercy? It is said that a mother once approached Napoleon to plead for her son to be pardoned. And so Napoleon informed the mother that her son had committed a crime, not once, but twice, and that he deserved to die in order for justice to be done. She replied, I'm not asking for justice. I'm pleading for mercy. Napoleon said, but your son doesn't deserve mercy. She said, well, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. So her words penetrated deep into Napoleon and he decided, you know what? I'll pardon your son. Because justice and mercy, yes, to under, appreciate mercy, you have to understand justice, but mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. And you watch this demonstrated with Jesus while he's on the cross with criminals on either side of him and one of them pleads for mercy. One of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed Jesus saying, if you are the Christ... Save yourself and us. 
But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? Good job, good job. And we indeed, what's the word? Justly. We, this is justice for you and I, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And look at what Jesus said. Jesus said to him, assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus was not taking a nap for three days. He got business done fast, and he took this man with him. He said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. He admitted, I deserved to die. This was justice, but I pled for mercy, and God had mercy on me. Our God is a merciful God. Now, this may surprise you, but uh, since I gave my life to Jesus, I've, uh, I've sinned two times. <laughs> two times too many to remember or to mention. Too, too many times to mention. I remember this time, this was a few years back, and I, I got this traffic violation, and I was all, it was a pretty hefty one. I thought, man, I don't, I don't want to I don't want to pay that big old bill. That's a, uh, I just was having a stressed out day anyway, and that's my excuse for why I got the traffic violation. And, and now I got stress on top of stress. And, and so I thought about it, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go see the judge. I'm going to go see the judge and see what the judge says when I tell the judge I'm guilty, but I'm going to do what this mother did to Napoleon and just ask for mercy. So I go in, and the first question is, hey, did you do, did you do this? Because they want to know, are you like contesting this? They no, no, I, I did it, okay? Then what do you want to say? So I said what I wanted to say, and I don't even remember what I said, but I bottom line just boiled it down to, uh, I just asked for mercy. I don't really want to pay all that. And I know that I have to, no matter what you, know, what you say is what you say. So I knew that whatever the judge decided was going to be my decision. So he heard me out, heard that I admitted I was guilty, but I asked for mercy. And he did something I didn't even know judges could do. He kind of reworked that ticket, turned it into something that wasn't much, and made me pay just a very little bit. And said, I'm going to file it over here. And in a year, it'll disappear as if it never even happened. I thought, dear Lord, I like you a lot. <laughs> And I, I deserved justice, but I asked for mercy. And we got to understand that we deserve justice, and, but we need to ask for mercy. We deserve Friday, but we can ask for Saturday. And our God is a God that is full of mercy. <clears throat> Look at this. Whoops, I got I to go back. God, who is rich in mercy. And this one, you are Lord, you're long-suffering and abundant in mercy. So Jesus gave it all. Because God is merciful. Why else? Why did Jesus give it all? It leads us to Sunday morning. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, God is full of grace. God is full of grace. I want to take us to what the Apostle Paul said at the end of 1 Corinthians 15, where we read already, where he said, these are all the people he appeared to about what's most important. He died for our sins. He was buried. And then he rose on the third day. That's Sunday morning. We're going to talk about that. And, and, and that he is full of grace. How is grace different than mercy? Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. So you see, Saturday was about hell. Jesus went there and plundered it. But Sunday is about heaven. Yeah. I don't have to go on Saturday because of the mercy of God. But I get to go to heaven with Jesus for eternity because of the grace of God. Is there anybody grateful with the Apostle Paul and this pastor for the grace of Jesus? I am. Apostle Paul was so grateful. So grateful for the grace of God. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. I stand here today, not because I went to Bible school, not because of any righteous deeds on my behalf. I stand here in this church service today along with you for the same reasons, because of the justice of God, the mercy of God, and ultimately, because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of God, we are what we are. And the Apostle Paul was so grateful for it. I'm grateful for it. I know you are grateful for it. Back in December of 1772, a man by the name of John Newton in England 
began to pen the words to, I think, maybe the most well-known Christian hymn ever written that, in my estimation, will be one of the songs that we will still sing in heaven for eternity. And it's the song called Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. You see, John Newton was the captain of a slave ship. And one stormy night, he cried out to God to save his life and his ship. And he knew that God answered his prayer. Because of that night, he gave his life to Jesus. And his heart was changed in a moment. And he repented of all that sin. And that's why he penned the words, oh, that saved a wretch like me. And he spent the rest of his life fighting against the slave trade. And God graced him to live long enough to see, see the end of the slave trade. But it was that amazing grace that touched John Newton. It was the same amazing grace that touched the apostle Paul. He said, I'm not worthy to be listed among the apostles. It was the same amazing grace that reached my family and started in my mom and back in the 1970s. And then touched me and saved my dad and saved my brothers. And met you and met your family and met somebody and there was a friend of yours and the grace of God that has reached all the way through the years and through the decades and through the generations that made it to us today of which we celebrate on this Easter Sunday morning. It is the grace of God by which we stand. And you know, I don't think there's any greater testimony to the resurrection of Jesus than the disciples themselves. The disciples would never have given their life, would have been beaten and imprisoned and martyred for their faith if they were not absolutely convinced of the resurrection of Jesus. And here's what I want you to know as we sum up today. All the early church and the disciples knew that God was just. They knew that God was merciful. And they knew that God was full of grace. And they knew that Jesus gave it all. God gave it all. There was nothing more that God could have, could have given. There's nothing more. He gave himself. And they knew that Jesus gave it all because of who God was. His justice, his mercy, and his grace. And because of that, it demanded a response from them that said, the grace of God is going to have an effect on my life. And I'm going to work harder than anybody you've ever seen. But actually, it's not me, but it's the grace of God. Because the grace of God is not going to just fall upon my life flippantly or casually. But I understand Sunday because I appreciate Friday. Because I understand Friday and because I understand Saturday, I can celebrate Sunday and I will give my all in response. I titled this message All or Nothing because our God gave it all so that we could lack nothing. But I also titled it, titled it All or Nothing so that you and I would know we only have one of two responses to the gospel of which you hear today. It's all of you or it's nothing. There is no middle ground. There is no casual response to a bloody cross and a resurrected Savior. There is no flippant religious response that says, oh, I'll just, I'll give him this or I'll give him that or I'll, you know, I'll just, oh yeah, I believe, so does the devil. The, 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 there is no casual response. There's an all or nothing response and I'm bringing you to this point to make you certain that you're giving one of the two responses. That you're either all in like the early disciples in the Apostle Paul, or you give him nothing. There is no middle ground. And this is why I say this. Because Jesus said, I sum up all the commandments like this. This is what I want to say to you. I want to say this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. How many of you would say to me, I think the Lord is trying to sum up. He wants all of us. He wants every part of you. He wants every part of you. Why does he say that? Listen, the gospel is free. You've heard that. It just costs you everything. The gospel is absolutely free. You cannot earn your way to, in, into heaven. You can't earn your way for salvation. That's religion. That's man's attempt at reaching God. You cannot do it. Jesus would not have died on a bloody cross. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have given all of that if we could have done something to get there. We can't. But, so there's just one response then. Jesus says, listen, it's free. I, I did it for you. Here's all I want from you. You. I just want you. I want you. I want your heart. I want your passions. I want your thoughts. I want your strength. I want the best of you because I gave you my best. So I want to bring you to a point of prayer. I don't want to bring you to this decision. Will you give him your all today? 
Now, I want to talk to the Christian first, because there's people in here that are convinced they're a Christian. I want to talk to you just for a moment. And you very well may be. You may have already given your life to Jesus, but you may have given part of your life to him. You may have given some of your life to him. Have you given him the right response to what these three days actually represent? Have you given your all to him as he gave his all to you? I want that to be a question for everyone who considers themselves a Christ follower in the room today. And today may be your day to say, to say that's it. He's getting on my all. I'm going to give you my all. Or maybe some, someone in this room might, want, might be like what we would call a prodigal. That would say, I've walked away from God. I was, in the, I was in the house for a while, but I've walked away and I want to come home. And I want to get my life back right with God. Then I want you to pray with me the prayer I'm about ready to pray as well. But there might be some of you in the room that have never given your life to Jesus. And I want to talk to you, please. Do not, no moving around, no dream teamers moving, nobody moving. Just pay attention just for a moment. Jesus did all of this for you. He loves you more than you have any idea. He, think, he was thinking about you when he was on that cross. How could he go through all of that? How could he do all of this? Because he could see into the future and he could see today, he could see in 2024 that Julie and John and Ben and Sarah and you, whoever your name is that would say, today's my day, I want to give him what is the right response to what he gave for me? I need you to know he did it all for you. He loves you more than you've ever been loved in your life or more than you have ever loved anything or anyone in your entire life. I'm not asking you to say yes to religion. I'm asking you just to respond to Jesus. That's it. That's it. And I want to pray a prayer for you and I want you to know this. I want you to know that if you will just admit to Jesus like all of us who have that said, I'm a sinner because the Bible says I am and I want you to be my savior. If you will just do that and say, I'm a sinner, I want you to be my savior, that's it. He's one prayer away for you becoming right with him. So if you're not right with God, or you're not sure if you are, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. Or maybe if you're here and you're saying, I'm gonna get my life right with God, I'm coming back home, I'm a prodigal, and I'm giving him my all today. Then I want you to pray this prayer with me. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes, and I'm gonna ask in just a moment, that I'm about ready to pray, I'm going to ask this question. Are you right with him? Have you given your all to him? And if you are saying today, I want to get right with God. I want to make this day the best day of my life. And I want to get right with him. And if you're going to pray that prayer with me, I'm not going to call you forward or call you out in any way to embarrass you. But I would love to know between you, me, and Jesus Who's going to pray this prayer with me today? And on the count of three, I just want you to look up at me. And I want you to wave your hand at me. And I just want to catch eyes with you to know you're going to pray that prayer with me. One, two, three. Just look up right now and wave your hand at me. I see you. Who else is in this room? You're going to pray this prayer. I see you and I see you. I see you. I see you, sir. That's great. Who else? Just keep, keep your hand up. I see you here and here and here, 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 here. Great. Who else is here? I don't want to miss you. I see you back here. I see you here and here and here and here and here. I see you over here. It's great. I see you here. I see you here. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. All over the room, every section. Who else? Something stirring in your heart. Do not miss this opportunity. I want you to know it's not me. It's Jesus knocking on the door of your heart saying, I, I, I want to have a chance in your life. Give me a chance in your life. Who else that would say, Bob, I want to pray that prayer today. Awesome. I see you here. I see you back here. That's great. Church, you know what to do. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're all going to pray this prayer to together. So everyone repeat this prayer out loud after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today in need of forgiveness. I want you in my life. I, I, I want to be born again. So today, fill me with your spirit so that I'll live for you with all of me all the days of my life. I pray this right now. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout it, amen. amen. Come on, give God praise today. Come on, will you, will you stand to your feet together this morning? If you prayed that prayer this morning, both in the room and online and in Pendleton, and we just want to say we celebrate with you. In fact, church, could we do this? Could we applaud and cheer with our friends one last time? The greatest decision you'll ever make.
But listen, we mean what we say when Pastor Bob started his message and said, we want to help you on your spiritual journey. We want to help you as a church, your church family now, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and to make a difference. So help us to help you. If you made that decision, you prayed that prayer from the sincerity of your heart today. If you're in the room, you can do this. If you'll notice in the chair back in front of you, there's a black plate. You can just grab your phone even right now. Open it. All you got to do is open it and hold it right next to that black plate. There's going to be a form that's going to come up where we can get your information so we can get connected with you, get you a Bible, help you with your next steps. Your next steps might be what somebody did today is water baptism. We want to help you in that process or whatever it may be. We also today, on your way out, right out these middle doors, there's some people standing around these kiosks. We call that next steps. You can stop by there as well and just say, hey, that was me. I prayed that prayer. We'll get connected with you. Also, if you're new and just checking us out, swing by there as well. We have gifts for you. We're just so glad that you're here with us this morning and if you're watching online you'll notice there's some links coming up in the chat you can click on those because we want to connect with you as well send you some stuff also i don't know about you but i feel like on a resurrected sunday before we leave here today can we worship one last time can we just one last 30 seconds of praise for a resurrected jesus can we do that come on let's sing together praise because you're sovereign praise because you reign praise because you rose and defeated the grave i praise because you're faithful praise because you're true praise because there's nobody great
Thank you.